All right, um, the, we're going to be talking this morning, as I mentioned, about uh, hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis, uh, well, May is hemochromatosis month here in Canada. Uh, if you're not familiar with this term, folks, don't feel badly. You're not alone. What's alarming is that we are talking about one of the leading inherited diseases that's out there. This is a killer. Uh, it affects perhaps as many as 1 in 300 within the general population. And yet, many in the medical community can either ignore or simply miss the warning signs of this. This morning, we're going to examine what's been dubbed the bronze killer in some detail. And uh, we want to hear from you, as I mentioned, either through your own questions you have uh, for our distinguished guests or anecdotally through your experiences with hemochromatosis. Uh, this may be running in your family. You may have a friend who's been dealing with this. You may have lost someone to hemochromatosis. With me in the studio this morning is Bob Rogers, uh, Executive Director of the Canadian Hemochromatosis Society. And in a moment, we're going to be joined on the line by one of the top researchers into hemochromatosis, Dr. Paul Adams, is a professor of medicine and chief of gastroenterology at the London Health Sciences Centre. Uh, and uh, I understand we have the doctor on the line as well now. Uh, Dr. Adams, good morning to you. Good morning. And Bob, good morning to you. Good morning, Brian. Good to see you. Now, of course, you're a Westerner, right? Uh, I was actually born in Toronto, Brian, yeah, yeah. and in 2003 uh, went out to Vancouver, and um, uh, I'm enjoying it out there. And Boy, I'm... it's tough to take, huh, Bob? <laughs> especially in the middle of January, February. I now. think so. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty hard to go skiing and, uh, and, and swimming all at the same time. Yeah, and it's great to see you. Thank you very much. And, of course, I understand you're sort of in Ontario now because... Because being that this is uh, the month of May is hemochromatosis month, you want to get the word out there. I've been traveling uh, across Canada. I was in Edmonton and Ottawa and uh, down to London, uh, back into Toronto. And I'm glad to be on uh, air this morning with you, Brian, because this is a disorder that in this uh, listing area could affect a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to. People are going to be shocked when they hear about this. Um, Dr. Adams, let's begin with you here. Tell us in layman's terms, if you can, what exactly is hemochromatosis. Well, you're good at pronouncing it. You're off to a good start. Well, I mispronounced I, it I, once I this morning. Spell yeah. it. <laughs> uh, this is Canada's most common genetic disease, and that's also true in the U.S., and this surprises many people. It, it's not a new disease. A disease, in fact, it was described in the 19th century. A, a very detailed book was written about it in 1934. What's a bit new about it is that the the gene that causes this disease, this is an inherited genetic disease, was not discovered until 1996. And now there's a diagnostic blood test which can test for the gene, which has simplified the diagnosis in many people and has allowed us to go out into the community and see how common this is with a simple blood test. And when we've done this in southwestern Ontario uh, and other places, We've shown that about 1 in 227 people whose ancestors are from Northern Europe uh, have this condition, at least genetically. So that's extremely common. That makes it about 10 times as common as cystic fibrosis, which is another genetic disease that everyone's heard of. Now, this is an overloading of iron in the body, right? You get an abnormal gene from each of your parents. And then your body is absorbing too much iron from your diet right from birth. And this creeps up on you. And in some people, when they're in their 50s and 60s, that excess iron has built up in their liver and other tissues and can cause some damage. And, and when you say can cause some damage, from what the material I've read, uh, that may be putting it lightly. This, this can kill, can't it? Yes, you can get cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis just means scarring. When you say cirrhosis to many people, they think alcohol, but alcohol is just one of many causes of cirrhosis, and hemochromatosis is a cause of cirrhosis. People that have cirrhosis and hemochromatosis are more predisposed to cancer of the liver, and that's another life-threatening complication. But not everyone gets those problems. There's quite a range of expression of this disease from people that have the genes and have normal iron tests to the very severe cases that have died from it. Some patients have had liver transplants. Now, when we talk about the genetics of this, how genetically potent is it? In other words, 
Uh, for example, if a young couple were to learn that one had the, the gene that causes this, would they be counseled perhaps not to have children, that sort of thing? No, no, not at all. Um, first of all, it's got to be on both sides of the family. I always ask people, uh, couples when I meet them whether they met at a family reunion. Of course, that was popular with the royals. <laughs> And, uh, and that raises a whole other set of issues yeah. that we're not going to deal with today. <laughs> well, and the other thing, of course, when you're doing genetic testing within a family of any type, it is a type of paternity testing. Right. So they have to be aware of that when you start testing. We we do not routinely recommend testing newborns or in utero testing. Uh, it has been done in research studies. Uh, this is a disease that doesn't cause trouble till you're in your 50s. And, for example, if the parent has the disease, you could hardly say you should not have children because they might turn out just like you. Uh, So for those reasons, we would never recommend uh, uh, against having children. We've occasionally had requests uh, prenuptial, which is a a bit of an awkward area as well. Are you going to choose a new mate if the person carries that gene and so on? All right, so let's let's look at symptoms here. Uh, you mentioned liver disease, but I mean outwardly, would would the person with hemochromatosis, uh, who is uh, certainly developing disease, would you be able to tell what's going on with them just by looking at them? Well, in the late stages of disease, uh, there are some patients that have a change in their skin color, and it's kind of a brownish gray discoloration to the skin. Some people say they've got a tan all year round. Uh, and that's a gradual change, so they may not notice it. They might notice that their their skin colors changed since their wedding photograph. Sometimes a picture of brothers and sisters together shows that one has that color and the one beside them doesn't. Uh, that's one of the findings that's not present in all cases. Um, the the symptom the symptoms are very vague of this condition, and that's why it's often uh, misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed. Uh, Many patients complain of fatigue, but you may know that 58% of Canadians uh, complain of fatigue in surveys, so it's a bit hard to know what the background noise is. Why doesn't the medical community, though, Dr. Adams, simply do, you know, I mean, when you go into the doctor and he wants to call for blood tests, he does CBC, does all kinds of whatever they are, different tests, why isn't there a box to check for this? Well, that's a good question, Uh, and many patients will say they've had every blood test done, but they haven't had this test done. In fact, the most common way this is diagnosed in Ontario now is the patient complains of fatigue. The doctor orders an iron blood test, usually ferritin, thinking it's going to be low, thinking that the patient may be low in iron, causing the fatigue, and then they're very surprised that the iron is very high. Now, the other part of your question is why isn't there a a mass screening uh, program for this? We were quite involved with a project like that in London called the AIRS study, where over 100,000 people were screened for this, and that's how we got some of the, the statistics. The one in 200 and you said 220. Yeah, yeah. Now, 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 screening is a little bit of a dirty word in medicine because it it's talking about testing people that don't have a disease to help those that do have a disease. And whether screening is cost-effective or a good thing depends on a lot of variables, like how good is your screening test? Is the screening test expensive? Can there be any harm done from the screening test? Do you have a treatment for this condition? Do people who are screened and treated early do better than people that aren't screened and are just found incidentally. And we don't have all the answers uh, for hemochromatosis on all these questions. In some ways, it performs well, but in other ways, it may not perform well. For example, there are some studies showing that some people with hemochromatosis never get sick, so there'd be no benefit spending money on them. So this is one of the controversies. There was some concerns about genetic testing large uh, numbers of people in the population. Could they be turned down for insurance or denied jobs and so on? And we we really saw very little of that. 